Hey guys and welcome back to a new video. In this video I will show you a solution to a very common problem Android developers face when they build an app with a proper architecture. Let's take a look at this little sample here. So we just have a text field and a validate button and let's say we can enter a name. So if we enter a proper name here and click validate, nothing happens here in this simple example. But if, if the length of the name is below three in this case, then we validate this and it says, okay, the name must be at least three characters long. So we just have some kind of data input and we want to validate this. If we want to do this with a proper architecture, we do this in the view model or some kind of other classes. We definitely don't want to do this validation logic in the UI layer. So that is one part of this best practice to not do this validation logic in the UI layer. But on the other hand, most of you will know that it's a best practice to use string resources in uh, Android to just make sure that you can easily translate your app to other languages. And to use string resources, you actually need access to the context. And in view models, you don't have access to the context. So how can you actually make sure that you send, for example, error messages or some kind of success messages from the view model to the UI using string resources. And in this video, I will show you a very simple solution to the problem. And that is definitely not by using the application context in the view model. So if we take a look here at this very simple view model, um, you could, of course, pass the application context here. In, in terms of memory leaks, this wouldn't be an issue because you use the application context. Uh, but that, the problem with that approach is that you then can't unit test your view model anymore because if you use an uh, application context, you need to make an instrumented unit test for that. Like uh, then it needs to run on an Android emulator and it can't run on the JVM anymore, which makes the test run longer in the end. So all that happens here in this view model is we have an error channel. So just a channel in which we send strings. So these strings would be these error messages and we can receive these simply by using a flow here, which we will then uh, observe here in the UI. It's, it's nothing special, no need to understand every line of code here. Here in this launch effect block, we consume that flow, this error flow. And if we, if this flow gets triggered, so if we send something in the channel, we show a snack bar with this error message. So if you want to follow along, you can get this uh, initial project here from down below, but it's really nothing special. Um, so you can also just lean back and watch and you will be able to apply this simple principle. So what we will do is here in validate inputs, we check if the name length is less than our minimum name length. If it is, then we simply send this error message in our error channel. And this is what we actually want to avoid because if we now want to translate our app to another language, then this string wouldn't be translated because we don't use, uh, use this as a string resource. However, if we would want to use it as a string resource, then we would need to do something like a get string or rather like context.getString. And we don't have the context here. So how can we solve this problem? We can very easily solve this by introducing another class here, a new Kotlin class called UI text. And that will be a sealed class. So in general, and yes, let me add that to git. In general, if we deal with strings, then there can be two different scenarios. On the one hand, we can have a dynamic text. So for example, if we get the string from an uh, API, so the API responds with some kind of error message, that is text that we kind of don't own. So we can't really, um, we don't decide that this is the error message, instead the API does that. And in that case, we of course, also can't really use a string resource because the error message comes from the API. So we would actually rather need to provide some kind of language code to the API and the API then responds with a proper um, error message in the, in the corresponding language. So that is one option. We have a dynamic text. The other option would be that we use a string resource. So those are the two types of strings we actually always deal with in apps. And with the sealed class, we will make use of these two. So we will actually just define these two ways on the one hand, we have a very simple data class, dynamic text or dynamic string, and we pass a value, a string value, and make it inherit from UI text. So in the end, this UI text class will just be a wrapper class around our strings. And we will then um, take this, Let's, let me actually write the, the second one first here, that is a class string resource. And this will take the um, resource ID now, which is an integer. 
So the ID of the of the string resource. And we also want to have a var, var arc here for possible arguments of type any. I think we need to say var arc val args, yes. So what does that now mean? That of course also needs to inherit from UI text. Like this. So we can now distinguish between dynamic strings. So again, um, those come from a service, from APIs. Or we can use this to pass a string resource where we just pass the ID here. So we don't pass the actual string, we just pass the ID with possible arguments. And then we just have a UI text object that either contains a resource ID or a string directly. If it contains a string directly, we can just read it. Um, but if it contains a string resource, then we can kind of extract that actual string from that string resource in our UI layer. So the way this will work is we will have a composable function inside of this class called as string and that will now return the actual string what we will return here is we will return a when expression so when this when this actual this instance of this ui text is a dynamic string what we will then return is we just return the value of that so whatever we passed for this string so that would be the error message that comes from the api however if it is a string resource, it becomes a little bit more interesting because now we can extract that string resource since we are inside of a composable function. So this can only be executed in our UI layer. And we can simply say, okay, string resource, this composable. And we simply pass our RAS ID and our arguments. And that way, we simply get our string, which we then, then simply extract in the UI layer. However, we can use this UI text class anywhere in our project. So let's see how we would now make use of that. So we now go back to our view model. And instead of sending strings in this error channel, we can now send UI text inside of this error channel. And suddenly you can see we will get an error here. Now we actually need to create a string resource for this particular string. So let's cut this. And we say, okay, we want to now send a UI text that we now have the option to send a dynamic string, which would be the equivalent here. So, oops, this would be pretty much the same as we had before. Um, that's, of course, not what we want because this does not come from the API. This is our very own error message. Instead, we want to send a string resource. And here we then pass the RAS ID, which is, um, let's call that R that string dot min name error or so min name length error and press alt enter create a string resource and simply pass this for this uh, minimum name length constant we want to pass a percentage s uh, actually d because that's a placeholder like a how do you say an argument a string a resource argument which we can then uh, pass in our string resource file so we go to RAS, values, strings XML. Um, actually, no, we don't pass this here. We, of course, pass this uh, when we extract this. But here you can see we now have the string, uh, string resource. We pass this to our um, string resource UI text class. And now, since we have an argument here for the minimum name length, we can simply pass this here for the argument. So min name length. And that way we now send this UI text string resource instance into this channel and not the raw string anymore. So we can use this wherever in our project we like and we then just extract this in the UI layer where we have access to the context. So if we take a look here in main activity, um, here, actually because we are inside of launch defect, we can't um, extract this with the, um, with the composable function we specified. Let's just specify another function that lets us extract this given a context. So we can copy this, paste it here, remove the composable. So we can also use this in non-composed code. We pass the context here. And then we can say context.getString and we pass this stuff. And you can see that then the error is gone and we can 
use either of these two overloads. So either in a composable function, we don't need to provide, provide a context, or if we um, use this, for example, in the launch defect block, then we can pass the context to still do this. Or if you have an XML project, then this would also be the proper way to do this. So in here, we can then um, get the context by using local context.current. And instead of this error here, we can say error dot as string. And here we pass our context. So here we now extract this actual string out of this message that we send from the view model. So that way we can just make sure that we can use string resources in all of our project without needing any type of context and we just extract them in the UI where we have the context. That's all we really do here. I personally use this approach in all of my major projects and I love it. It works like a charm. It works really well and I hope that will be the case for your project as well from now on. If you actually want to learn how you can structure such a big project, so a project that really scales to an industry level, then I can really recommend my multi-module course, which you can find down below in the description. And right now there's actually an Easter sale where you can get 20% off of all my courses, not just this one, but that one is the best one if you actually want to learn how you can build a really solid app with a solid architecture, following solid principles, all that stuff. So yeah, limited sale just this week um, till Monday after Easter. So the April 18th, I think it is. And uh, yeah, most of you will know I don't do these discounts very often. But right now, since we have Easter, then uh, yeah, let's, let's do one and enjoy. Happy learning. See you in the next video. Have a nice day. Bye bye.